G'day maths fans, welcome back to a fresh episode of McGrathematics. Today we're lobbing up an extension one lesson on parametric equations for year 11. Okay, let's dive into what a parametric equation is and look at some types of examples we can ask, can be asked to handle in the extension one course. Okay, we're starting off with a pretty generic Cartesian linear function. So the word Cartesian means involving x and y. So our function is y equals 3x minus 2. But if we were in a weird mood, silly goofy mood, what if we wanted to write this as a parametric equation? We're going to throw an extra parameter in there. A parameter is another word for a variable, such as t for time is a pretty common one. Later on, we'll be, we'll be using theta for angles as well. But anyway, we can instead write y equals 3x minus 2 as 3t minus 2, where x is equal to t. Okay, so we've written this one equation as two separate equations, both relating to the, to the same parameter, which in this case is t. Okay, it seems pretty pointless, but the reason we do this is because um, sometimes splitting an equation into two separate parts can make the equations easier to deal with. So in year 12, when we're lucky enough to study some projectile motion in extension one, and then even more in extension two, uh, we'll be taking the equation for a projectile, splitting it into its vertical and horizontal components, so the problems are easier to manage. Okay, so essentially the main application in this course is so that we can do more stuff with equations because they're easier to manage if we divide and conquer. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that next year. Hopefully we'll do some more videos on um, projectiles in the future. Okay, we're gonna start off with our first worked example. We have a pair of parametric equations relating x and y to our extra parameter, which is t. We wanna combine these two into a single Cartesian equation, okay? This is gonna kind of feel like we are solving simultaneous equations because we're trying to go from two equations to one equation, which is essentially how we solve a pair of simultaneous equations. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the second function because it looks a little bit more friendly because it's got two and a one, which is less scary than a four and a three to me. Did I just say three? I meant to say three. Okay, we're gonna actually rearrange this equation to make the parameter t the subject. So we're going to put the minus one across the left to join the x to become a plus one. Then we're going to divide both sides by two. So we end up with t equal to x plus one divided by two. So we've rearranged it to get t by itself. Now we're gonna take our first equation, the one involving y, and we're gonna substitute in the fact that t is equal to x plus one over two. Then our y equation won't have a t in it, it'll have an x in it, so we'll have a Cartesian equation relating y and x. So subbing that into equation two, looks like this. Changing the t to an x plus one over two, now we're just going to simplify this a little bit using the fact that four over two is equal to two. So the fraction simplifies. Then we're just gonna expand two x plus two, simplify, and we end up with y equals two x plus five. That is our Cartesian equation for these two parametric equations. Now we'll do an example where we do that, but we do it backwards. We have a singular Cartesian equation. This one's for a parabola relating x and y. We're gonna try and write this as two separate parametric equations where our parameter is p, which is equal to one minus x. Okay, so we're essentially doing um, what we did last time. We're going to rearrange one of the equations and then substitute it into the other. So if p is equal to one minus x, we can rearrange this and put the x across to the left to make p plus x equals one. Then we can say x is equal to one minus p. So we've taken this parametric equation, we've rearranged it to make x a subject, and now we're gonna substitute this expression for x into our, um, into our equation for y. So wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a one minus p, which looks like this. Two times one minus p squared, minus three times one minus p, and then the plus four on the end. Okay, here's our second parametric equation. We're now just going to expand and simplify this as much as possible to make it look a little bit nicer. So expanding out our perfect square, don't forget this is one, and then we do um, one minus p and then double it for the middle bit. And then we do minus p squared for the last bit, which makes it positive. Uh, we have minus three and then we have plus three p here. Now we'll expand out this bracket at the front. So we get two minus four p plus two p squared. Now everything's all expanded. We're just gonna simplify. We have two p squared here. Uh, minus four p plus three p will be minus p and then two plus four is six, minus three is three. So there's our simplified expression for y in terms of p. Okay, so there are our two parametric equations. First one's here, this one is y in terms of p, and this one here is x in terms of p. So this one and this one are our two final answers to satisfy the conditions of this question. 
Okay, moving on to the next section of this video, we're going to start talking about circular parametrics. To do that, we need to have an idea of this um, identity. This right here is called the Pythagorean identity. Um, if you're studying the advanced course, you might have already come across this, but in case you haven't, this is an identity that holds true for any angle theta. If you take an angle, you put it with sine and cos, and you square them, plus them together, and the answer is always equal to 1. So it's a beautiful bit of trigonometry. I'll show you right now. Um, why this always works in case you don't believe me. So we're going to start with a triangle. Uh, pretend that this double marked angle down here is theta. So um, sine theta would be O over H and cos theta would be A over H as always. And here's the proof. So we've got O over H here, A over H here. So we've got sine and cos. We are squaring them. So we get O squared over H squared plus A squared over H squared. Combining these two fractions together, we get O squared plus A squared all over h squared. Now, if you remember your Pythagoras from year seven or eight, um, o squared plus a squared is equal to h squared because this is a right angle triangle. So o squared plus a squared, we can write as h squared. So then our expression turns into h squared over h squared, which is equal to one, okay? Doesn't matter what the angle is, as long as it's with sine and cos and those are squared and then plus together, the answer is always equal to one. All right, fun stuff. Now, this right here is how we express um, a pair of parametric equations for a circle. So x is the x component of the circle, y is the y coordinate. We can write this in terms of r, which is the radius of the circle, and theta, which is kind of like the angle of rotation at that point. Okay, so if we have a circle equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, we can express this parametrically as x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. Sorry if you can hear my dogs going absolutely ballistic in the living room. Hopefully they'll stop soon. All right, I'll show you why this works. Because if we take these two values of x and y and we square them, so we got, so I'm just putting these two values here into x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So here's the x being squared and here's the y being squared. Now, if we square r cos theta, we get r squared cos squared. If we square r sine theta, we get r squared sine squared. Now on the left-hand side, we can actually factor out the r squared out of both terms and write r squared times cos squared plus sine squared. And now because cos squared plus sine squared, as I said before, is always equal to one, this is r squared times one, so we get r squared equal to r squared. So left-hand side and right-hand side match up. So the equation must work and these must be fitting parametric equations for our circle equation. Now, if your circle is more complicated, if you have a change of center, um, the change of parametric equation is very similar. So if you have a equation where you've got um, x minus h squared, y minus k squared. So this right here is our equation for a circle where the center is h and the h and k and the radius is r. So we keep our parametric equations the same. We just put the um, x value of the center at the start and we put the y value of the center at the start of y. So same thing as before just with h and k plusing at the front. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. So here is a pair of parametric equations for a circle, because we've got an r and a cos theta for x, and we've got an r sine theta for the y. We are going to write this in Cartesian form, so in the form of an equation for a circle relating x and y. Here's how we do it. We're gonna take both these equations and we're gonna bring the four and the minus two across the left-hand side. So we get x minus four equals minus two cos theta, and we'll get y plus two is equal to two sine theta. Now these two equations in red, we are going to square both sides. So we get x minus four squared is equal to four cos squared theta. And y plus two squared is gonna be four sine squared theta. Now we take these two red equations here and we're going to sum them together. So we're gonna say x minus four squared plus y minus two squared is equal to four cos squared plus four sine squared. Now on the right hand side, again, like we did with the r squared, we can factor the four out of both of them. So we get four times cos squared plus sine squared. Sine squared plus cos squared, as always, is equal to one. So the right hand side is equal to four. And there, are, right there in blue is our equation circle. This is the equation for a circle with center four minus two and a radius of two, which we could have guessed by looking at the question because we've got a four and a minus two here. So that's our center for x, center for y. And what is ever in front of your cos and sine is equal to your radius. For the purposes of today's questions, it doesn't really matter whether there's a minus or a plus in front of that. Um, that could be important later on, but for today, don't have to worry about that. Still get you the same equation. 
Okay, and worked example four, we're gonna do that, but we're gonna go in reverse. We have right here, the Cartesian equation for a circle. We're gonna find the center and radius of the circle so we can write a pair of parametric equations to represent the circle. So the way we need to do this is by completing the square. So first thing we're gonna do is put that, put that plus one across to the right to make it a minus one. Now, because we have an x squared plus two x here, if we put a plus one after this, it'll be a perfect square because half of two is one and then one squared is one. Same thing here, half of minus four is minus two and then minus two squared is four. So we're gonna put a plus four here. If that makes no sense to you, you might wanna look up some videos or lessons on completing the square. All right, so plus one here and then a plus four here because we just put a plus one and a plus four on the left. We're also gonna put a plus one and plus four on the right hand side. Now we can factorize the left hand side and simplify the right. X squared plus two X plus one is gonna be X plus one squared if we factorize. And Y squared minus four Y plus four is Y minus two all squared. Right hand side works out to be four. So hopefully we can look at this and determine that this is a circle with a center at minus one positive two. And if R squared is four, that means the radius is equal to two. With this information and our content knowledge, we can write the pair of parametric equations as x equals minus one plus r cos theta, and y is equal to two, right here, two plus r sine theta. Again, these could have been minuses between the two and the two, or the minus one and the two. Um, it's still a correct answer. I'm just going with pluses for now. Okay, Groovy, now it's your turn. If um, what I've covered so far has made sense to you, here's a chance for you to try a couple by yourself. Here are our two sets of parametric equations, you want to combine them into one Cartesian equation. If you're having a go at these, by all means, pause the video, see where you get, and then unpause, because now I'm gonna go through my solutions. Okay, question A, I'm taking the first equation for X and I'm rearranging it. So I'm putting the 3T over here, then I'm going to put the X over here, and then I'm going to divide both sides by three. Making t the subject, I'm gonna substitute this into the second equation. So we're gonna have y equals four plus two times t, which is right here. And now I'm just gonna simplify as much as possible. So I'm going to um, multiply two on top of the fraction. Now I'm gonna multiply everything by three because I want no fractions, I want it to be nice and neat looking. So times this by three, this by three, this by three. Collecting and simplifying all on one side, we should end up with 3y plus 2x uh, minus 8 equal to 0. So well done if you got something similar to that. Next one is a, another pair of parametric equations. x is 3t, y is 6t squared. I'm going to take the simpler equation, which is the top one, and I'm going to rearrange this to make t the subject and then sub it into the more complicated one. So if x equals 3t, that means t is equal to x over 3 which means um, subbing into y, we get six times t, which is right here. Squaring it, so we're gonna get x squared over nine, multiplied by six, simplifies to y equals two x squared over three. Okay, a couple more for you to try. These ones are involving circular parametrics. So we've got two questions here. Like I said, if what happened earlier in the video makes sense, pause, have a go yourself, try and follow the pattern and see if you can achieve an answer that you're happy with. Okay, here are my solutions for question C. I'm just going to bring the four and the minus five across the left. Then we're going to square both sides. So we get X minus four squared and we get Y plus five squared. Now, if we add them together, we get um, on the right hand side, we'll get nine cos squared plus nine sine squared, which will just be equal to nine. And so there is our Cartesian equation for a circle with a center at four minus five, which was here, four minus five and a radius of three. So if you're really confident, you could have gone straight from the question to the answer if you know what you're looking at here and know what answer you're trying to find. But there's the working out if you need it. Part D, again, we have a Cartesian equation for a circle. We're going to complete the square to write a pair of parametric equations. So 15 goes across. We're going to add a nine here and a one here. So we'll add a nine and a one to both sides. Uh, factorizing the left, we get x plus three squared and y minus one squared equal to 25. Looking at this, hopefully we can identify this as a circle with a center at minus three, positive one, and a radius of five. So from that information, we have minus three plus r cos theta for x, and we have one plus r sine theta for y. 
Okay, finishing off today's uh, video, we're looking at an HSC question from 2022 multiple choice. We've got two parametric equations. Um, we've got uh, two plus t for x and three minus t squared for y. You're given four pictures and you've got to try and figure out um, which of these four curves best represents these parametric equations. They all have the same starting points. They're all parabolic in nature and you've got to figure out which one you'd be going for. So if you like a challenge, pause, try and figure it out, combine these equations and see what you're left with. Okay, hopefully you did that or you're just gonna watch me do it because I can't stop you. I'm just a man stuck in a room talking to a computer. Okay, taking x, we've got two plus t. Now we have t equal to x minus two by moving the two across to the left and then swapping sides. Putting that into the y equation, y is equal to three minus t squared, but t is actually now x minus two. So it's three minus two times x minus two squared. Okay, so this is a parabola. It's a concave down parabola because the bracket that has the x squared has a negative in front. So straight away, it's gotta be b or d. So worst case scenario now is a coin flip. If you are good with your transformations, then if you've already studied that topic, maybe in advanced, um, you can look at this equation and say, oh cool, this is a parabola, it's concave down, it's been shifted two units to the right, and it's been shifted three units up. So the normal starting point or the vertex for a parabola is at zero, zero. Our parabola has gone two to the right and three up. So our vertex should be at two, three. And that's why B is the correct answer as opposed to D, okay? Because B has the vertex in the right spot, whereas D has the vertex before two, three, which is not where um, this parabola has been transformed to. Anyway, if you haven't done transformations yet in um, advance, that might be a bit hectic for you. But if you have, hopefully that makes sense to you or you got lucky and picked the right answer. Okay, beautiful. Thanks for watching. There's some exercises um, from Math in Focus if you want some more practice. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next Math Extension video, hopefully very soon. Bye for now, not forever.